Hello, uh, my dear students. Welcome to my today's online class on one more topic pertaining to the type study of Pelemon, that is freshwater prawn. In this class, we will be discussing about the circulatory system. Okay. We shall start our class. You have learnt in your previous classes the external morphology of prawn, structure of a typical biomass appendage, then different appendages, their functions, etc. Next, in this class, you will be learning about the circulatory system. Okay. Now, So, this is the diagram which shows the circulatory system in prawn, the diagrammatic representation. What you need to draw in your exams if the question is asked. And this diagram, the bottom one, shows the direction of blood flow from heart to the gills and from gills back to the heart okay schematic representation of blood flow now we shall start our class the blood circulation in palaman is open type that is blood flows through the body spaces see if the blood always flows through the network of capillaries without abruptly being dumped into the spaces or the lacunae, that type of circulatory system is called closed type of circulatory system, what we have. On contrary to this, in prawn, the blood circulation is of open type in the sense, the blood flows through the major arteries and then abruptly dumped into the body spaces called hemocele. The body space in arthropods is called hemocele. Okay. So, hemocele means space. He means something concerned with blood. So, such spaces are called hemocele. And uh, as, uh, customarily, the circulatory system includes the blood, heart, true blood vessels and hemocelomic spaces we shall learn one by one okay now first we shall talk about the blood okay the blood includes both circulating fluid and as well as body fluid the cellular part of the blood includes only the amoeboid leukocytes okay whereas the liquid part plasma contains a copper containing respiratory pigment called hemocyanin in dissolved state. The way we have hemoglobin, prawn has hemocyanin. Okay. Our hemoglobin has iron, whereas hemocyanin contains the metal copper. And this pigment is responsible for blue coloration of the blood. In us, blood is red due to the hemoglobin pigment, but here the blood is blue due to hemocyanin and the blood can coagulate quite rapidly here also. Okay. This is about the blood. Now we shall learn about the heart. The heart is more or less a triangular organ I'll show you in the diagram little later. With the inner spongy cavity and the heart is placed beneath the carapace that is the exoskeleton in the cephalothoracic region and above the gonads that is reproductive organs. So the heart, the triangular heart with the spongy cavity is placed below the carapace and above the gonads inside the viscera. Okay. 
then this heart is united with the pyloric stomach the region of the stomach that pylorus okay it is more nearer towards heart heart is united with the pyloric stomach by a cardiopyloric strand the anterior end of the heart is called apex it is more pointed i'll show you in the diagram and uh, the opposite end broad end is directed posteriorly so the apex is the anterior end which is uh, pointed and uh, the posterior end is broad and it is directed posteriorly i'll show you in the diagram don't worry then this entire structure that is heart is enclosed within a hemocyclic space i have already told you what are hemocyclic spaces and this sinus is called pericardial sinus the wall of which serves as pericardium okay in us also the heart is placed in pericardial cavity and lined by pericardium same way then please note two lateral and one median longitudinally learn, uh, running fibrous tissue strands connect the heart with the body wall and thus fix to its position inside the pericardium heart is placed in its position because of three strands out of the three two are lateral and one median and these strands are made up of fibrous tissue because of this the heart is placed in its position all right now the wall of the heart is pierced by five pairs of slit like openings called ostia important point to note down they serve as valves okay preventing the backflow of blood the wall of the heart is pierced by five pairs of slit like openings called ostia ostium singular ostia plural out of these five pairs two pairs are present on the lateral sides one pair in the ventral side and one pair in the dorsal side and one pair at the posterior end of the heart please note the position of ostia is fixed two pairs on the lateral sides one pair in the ventral side one pair on the dorsal side and one pair at the posterior end of the heart so totally you find five pairs of slit like openings and these ostia are contracted and they work as valves to prevent backflow of blood from pericardial sinus to the to prevent to permit only flow of blood from pericardial sinus to the heart and it prevents the flow of blood from heart back into the pericardial sinus so valves basically function to permit only flow of blood from pericardial sinus to the heart and not vice versa very important point to be noted after learning about the heart after learning about the blood now we shall learn about true blood vessels what we see in case of pelamon okay now these are the vessels which possess definite walls all of them please not originate from the heart and they supply blood to different parts of the body and because of this you can call them as arteries okay then from the heart six large vessels originate you find six large arteries originating from the heart to supply oxygenated blood to different parts of the body okay now what are those six vessels and how exactly they are where exactly they are present let us see the diagram shows the heart 
in the middle the triangular shaped structure you can see the broad posterior end and narrow apex anterior end pointed end so you can see the heart you can see the ostia and you can see the principal arteries okay there are six i'll tell them just now i'll tell them then you can see the ventral arteries which are partially drawn in this diagram okay so this diagram is very important it almost gives you the entire picture how the circulatory system is seen in prong okay now let us see what are the principal arteries first one a single ophthalmic artery right in the mid region you can see single ophthalmic artery number 1 napkai kule then paired antennary arteries paired antennary arteries on either side of the ophthalmic artery so 2 plus 1 3 then you find a pair of hepatopancreatic arteries you can see in the diagram right hepatopancreatic arteries all these three originate from the anterior end originate from the anterior end one pair of hepatopancreatic artery one pair of antennary artery and one single ophthalmic artery five and fourth one a single mid posterior artery which emerges from posterior end of the heart students you have to just correlate the position of these arteries in this diagram the ppts will also be posted along with the apart from uploading the video so you can go through each ppt for some time and then try to correlate the position and functioning of these arteries okay now so i have put the same diagram in 3 to 4 ppts so that while describing each artery you can just stand by correlate it with the diagram okay one by one we should study now first one is the ophthalmic artery it is single it is also called cephalic artery or cephalic artery it arises from apex of the heart you can see the diagram it arises from apex of the heart and runs anteriorly runs anteriorly along the midazole line up to the base of the rostrum and unites with branches of two antennary arteries this is all about ophthalmic artery you have to discuss each artery when you are asked to write about it okay then let us talk about antennary artery each antennary artery you i said a pair of them are present they originate from the heart and from sides of the ophthalmic artery on either side of the ophthalmic artery you see one antennary artery taking its origin it runs anteriorly along the outer bulge of the outer border of the mandibular muscles okay then each antennary artery what it does let us see sends two branches on its own side okay one on the right right side and one on the left side number one pericardial branch as the name itself suggests it supplies blood to the pericardial wall and the second one is gastric branch it supplies blood to the cardiac stomach name itself suggests and then mandibular artery to the muscle of the mandible so each antennary artery gives rise to three arteries okay on its side one pericardial branch one gastric branch one mandibular branch then each antennary artery splits into two be careful all the time you should compare with the diagram the explanatory part each antennary artery then splits into a ventral branch and a dorsal branch very clearly seen in the diagram 
Only thing is, each PPT you have to concentrate and study after listening to the video. So each antenary artery, apart from giving three branches, pericardial, gastric and mandibular arteries, splits into two, a ventral branch and a dorsal branch. We shall proceed further. Then, same diagram I have put. The ventral branch supplies vessels to the first and second antennae. By now, you must be familiar with the different appendages, 19 pairs of appendages in your, as you have learnt in your previous classes. So, the ventral branch supplies vessels to the first and second antennae. Then, the dorsal branch sends an optic artery to the eye. Dorsal branch sends an optic artery to the eye. Then, the two dorsal branches of the two antennaries unite with the median ophthalmic artery to run with the rostrum as paired rostral arteries. Don't get confused. Have some patience. Each PPT you study in detail, then study the uh, study materials will be which will be supplied to you. I think you will be clear. Okay, the explanation and the diagram are crystal clear. You have to put the efforts. All right. Then let us talk about uh, hepatopancreatic artery. Okay. The hepatopancreatic or hepatic artery. You know, of each side originates from anteromedian end of the heart. Sorry for the typographic error. It is not posteromedian. It is anteromedian only. Anteromedian end of the heart. And runs transversely to enter into the hepatopancreas. Okay. Then, let us talk about the fourth one. The mid-posterior artery, as the name itself suggests. This immediately after originating from the posterior median end of the heart, divides into a supra-intestinal artery and a sternal artery. Everything is labeled. All major arteries have been shown. This diagram is too good to learn the circulatory system. Okay. So, the mid-posterior artery which originates from the posterior median end of the heart okay, divides into supra-intestinal artery that is supra means above, intestine means intestine, above the intestine one thing, then sternal artery in the region of sternum another one. Okay. Then the supra-intestinal it is also known as <coughs> Dorsal abdominal artery, okay, supraintestinal is also called dorsal abdominal artery, runs posteriorly along the mid dorsal line up to the hind gut, up to the hind gut. Then it supplies blood to the alimentary canal and the muscles on the dorsal sides. Then the sternal artery runs transversely towards the ventral side. It pierces the thoracic ganglion mass and then bifurcates into an anteriorly directed ventral thoracic artery very clear in the diagram and posteriorly directed ventral abdominal arteries. Okay. So all these different types of arteries you have to learn from where they take their origin how they branch and supply blood to which all organs in the body. Okay, that's how we have to study the circulatory system. Again, I have put the same diagram. Then let us see the ventral thoracic artery supplies blood to the different parts on the ventral side of the cephalothorax. Okay, then ventral abdominal artery sends branches to the ventral side of the abdomen okay then all these arteries since it is open type of circulatory system ultimately abruptly break into finer branches 
and open within hemosilomic spaces. All right. Thus, the circulatory system of prawn lacks network of capillaries. Blood never flows into a closed system of capillaries. Okay. Now, after having learnt about major arteries, their branches, their place of supply, all this, now we shall learn about hemosilomic spaces. These are small spaces and they are called lacunae. Lacuna singular, lacunae plural. This lacunae, smaller hemosilomic spaces are called lacunae and these lacunae open into larger spaces called sinuses. Okay, larger spaces are called sinuses, smaller hemosilomic spaces are called lacunae. Lacunae ultimately open into sinuses. And the passage connecting the lacunae and the sinus or two sinuses. A passage connecting lacunae and sinus atva two sinuses are called hemosilomic channels. Hemosilomic channels. One more question. What are hemosilomic channels? They are the passages connecting either a lacuna and a sinus or two sinuses. Okay, you have to be very clear while writing your answers. Next. So, blood after flowing through small hemosilomic spaces or lacunae is collected in a pair of common elongated space called ventral sinus. Ultimately, all blood is dumped into ventral sinus. These are placed beneath the hepatopancreas and continue up to certain length within the abdomen. The two ventral sinuses are interconnected by several small slender channels. Okay, then from the ventral sinuses, six afferent branchial channels. Don't forget, afferent, six afferent branchial channels. Take the deoxygenated blood to the gills. Afferent branchial channels take deoxygenated blood to the gills. Whereas, efferent branchial arteries do the opposite function. So, be careful about AFF afferent, EFF efferent. Okay. So, from the ventral sinus, six afferent branchial channels carry the deoxygenated blood to the gills for purification. By now you know that in prawn you find gills as respiratory structures meant for exchange of gases. The whatever oxygen dissolved in water is taken and carbon dioxide is released into the surrounding water because they are basically aquatic animals. All right. So first out of six, First afferent branchial channel supplies blood to the podobranch and orthobranchs, while the remaining five supply to five pleurobranchs. What are these podobranchs, orthobranchs, and pleurobranchs? They are parts of the gills. You have a separate chapter in the phylum arthropoda as respiratory structures in arthropods. So. You will be taught there in detail the structure of gills. At that time, you will become more familiar with podobranch, orthobranch, and pleurobranch. For this class, you just know that first afferent branchial channel supplies blood to the podobranch and orthobranchs. Whereas, remaining five blood vessels supply to the five pleurobranchs. Okay. So, in your class on respiratory organs in arthropoda, you should learn three terms which are helpful for this class. Podobranch, orthobranch and pleurobranch. Okay. Then. So, in the gills, exchange of gases takes place. Carbon dioxide is given out. That is the metabolic waste. And oxygen, dissolved oxygen from the surrounding water is taken in. Okay. 
and that blood becomes purified in the sense it gets it becomes oxygen richer oxygenated blood and please note oxygenated blood is collected by six pairs of efferent branchial channels EFF efferent branchial channels and the oxygenated blood through these six pairs of efferent branchial channels is finally drained into the dorsal or pericardial sinus okay then so after having learnt all this you should learn the mechanism of blood flow how exactly the blood flows in different parts of the system okay that is mechanism of blood flow let us see i have given a separate diagram here again study this ppt for few minutes and learn now the heart contracts to drive the oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body through arteries i told you there are six major arteries so oxygenated blood reaches the pericardial sinus from there the blood gets into the heart and ostia prevent back flow of blood serving as valves and when the heart contracts this oxygenated blood okay goes to different parts of the body through the arteries then these arteries instead of forming capillary network you know open directly within hemosilomic spaces because we know it is open type of circulatory system from different hemosilomic lacunae deoxygenated blood is collected in the next step with impaired ventral sinuses then from these large spaces blood is sent for oxidation to the respiratory organs that is gills through the afferent branchial channels then from gills the blood returns to the pericardial sinus through efferent branchial arteries so this is the direction of blood flow in case of circulatory system of prong so dear students till now i have taught you the circulatory system different parts blood heart major arteries hemosilomic spaces and the mechanism of blood flow you can study this system in five different subheadings like this and try to understand then within the when the pericardial sinus is full it contracts and forces the blood to enter within the heart through the ostia and when the heart contracts okay the lip like borders of the ostia close and the blood is permitted to travel only through the arteries back flow of blood into pericardial sinus is prevented then uh here are few questions for you to answer after listening to the video and after studying the material supplied to you what are the questions neat label diagram to describe the circulatory system of prong you will write the diagram and you will describe the system for ten marks major question open type of blood circulation one mark the body space is called what one mark respiratory pigment one mark what metal is present one mark neat diagram depicting the circulatory system of palemon for five marks schematic representation to show the direction of blood flow three marks then the sinus in which the heart is present one mark how many pairs of ostia are present one mark then six large vessels you should simply list half mark each so totally three marks the smaller hemosilomic spaces are called what one mark so here are few questions carrying one mark three mark five marks in ten mark in compliance with the evaluation pattern or question paper pattern of maharani cluster university 
So after learning, listening to the video, after studying, after practicing the diagram, you can take a blue book or white sheets, start answering these questions. Same questions are supplied in the study material also. Then here are few references. Uh, Invertebrate Zoology by Kotpal, then Jordan and Verma, SM Prasad, and then you can log on to biologyshell.com. Don't go studyandscore.com because there this part is not there. Okay, prawn type study he is not still uploaded. You can go to biologyshare.com, tappers.com and other web sources. All right, then. Dear students, hope you have understood the circulatory system. Uh, it requires quite a bit of patience to understand. And uh, you have to sit and study for some time to understand, right? And you have to memorize quite a few things, but you can't help it. Thank you for your patient learning. Any queries, get back to me, either through WhatsApp or when you come for offline classes, contact classes. Till then, stay blessed. Thank you so much for your patient